This conference will now be recorded. Hello and welcome to Windows 10. In this tutorial, my main focus will be for you to get to know the interface, all the features and shortcuts that comprise Windows 10. Now, in my professional opinion, I feel like Windows 10 is the best operating system that's come along from Microsoft in a long time. It's definitely a big improvement. It's a shape shifter that changes its interface dependent upon whether you're using a traditional computer or a touch screen or a touch based one. It really has removed the damage brought by Windows 8, which really uh, made things difficult and awkward when we had that entire screen as our startup menu. And then it was confusing uh, to say the least. So there's a lot of changes um, and this new default browser, Microsoft Edge, I'd like to focus on that uh, briefly. The integration of Cortana, our new digital assistant, and also um, the new improved Microsoft cloud-based OneDrive cloud storage service and a whole lot more is in stored. So I want to focus uh, briefly on the Windows 10 start menu. And again, keep an open mind. Um, a lot of people say, oh, it's just a start menu. How bad could it be? Well, let's take a look. The new start menu, I think, is great, which, by the way, was the loudest complaint that desktop users had when we were running Windows 8. Windows 8 was the death of the start menu. It literally was. But look at this start menu. It's back with a vengeance, but in a good way. Now, the start menu um, is divided into two sections. So down the left-hand side, you'll find everything you need. All the applications from recently added are in alphabetical order, and you can see the letters, okay? And then you have these icons going down the left-hand side, and they're very obvious. So if you put your mouse over it, you'll see a name, so you understand what it is, okay? And this is really, you know, the account button here uh, that you saw me just briefly touch. You still have the ability to type and search and look up applications and files. It's really, really great. Even launch a web uh, site with your browser. Now, so that's our left side. Um, now, on the right side, basically, we have all the applications as tiles and the really nice thing about this is that um, you can widen the start menu. Now, don't panic. We're, we're not going to go as big as Windows 8 was. <laughs> but nice, you know, if you're not seeing everything or just to make it easier. So one of the things I want to point out is that um, we can add our own, you know, shortcuts. So, like, if I right-click um, on, let's say, like, Excel – and I go into pin to start. It just kind of throws it over there. I'd like to integrate it with the other Office applications that I already have. So I'm going to move it along to the side so it stays within that group. And then I would resize it. So I always right click. It's the easiest way to do it. Um, and then these group names, I developed these over time. And you'll get a group generic name when you start to add tiles. So let's say, for example, I add things like go to meeting, right? So there it is. Now I'm going to move it. And you can see, you can see there's a new group there. And then I'm going to add go to webinar. And then again, I, I always prefer a much smaller size because of overcrowding. So there we go. So just try to piece them together as close as you can. And again, move them, move them around. Um, if you want to, you know, create a new name, that's fine. And of course, typos just love to creep into our documents. <laughs> but again, you can right click it to fix it. So not a bad example at all. And then this little hamburger button that you see is simply just there. Just like you'll notice in the start menu, um, you could use that to expand it or collapse it. All right. So this is a new improved startup menu. Oh, one other thing. There are live tiles that you may or may not like. I used to have, there's a hole here and there's a reason for that. I had pictures 
And I don't know about you, but if I'm with a client, I don't think, you know, those things need to be revealed to the whole world. Um, and if I'm teaching in front of a large group of people, like 50 or more, I definitely don't recommend it. So I got rid of it and you can always right click and you can basically, you know, remove or delete, or if it says uninstall, it's not what people think. Sometimes people just say, Oh, it's just off the screen. No, you just got rid of the software. So you may, you may not want to do that. I would just unpin it. But in this case, let's just say I want to turn the live feature on or off. See, so it's no longer live. I don't know what the weather is this weekend, you know, and I really like to have it on for the weather. I travel sometimes quite a bit with my career. So it really helps me to be better prepared. Um, so again, that's just a personal thing for people, um, but get to know the start menu options. It's not a lot for you to really absorb, but it definitely helps. Now, Microsoft has a store, as you may be aware of from previous operating systems, you can click the Microsoft store and basically it's like taking a shopping list with you and you can search um, for items. So for example, if I, if I search for Windows 10, all right, let's say I'm looking for uh, shortcuts, right? So I'm going to see if I can find it. And I've, I had this earlier on my computer. Um, and then again, you got to be a little patient and then they're giving you some results. And then sometimes I'm going to be honest, you may not find exactly what you're looking for. Um, so there's a menu bar at the top. You may want to, you know, take a look through that. Um, but it's very, very helpful, you know, to say the least. So let's see. Let's see if I can find a game. I'm sure I can find hundreds of those. Now, because of that, I would go into the category games and then, uh, you know, you know, I don't want to get started on the Candy Crush saga, but they do have some games here. This is kind of nice if you have a computer at home with your kids. Um, but I'm going to close out of the Microsoft Store. And again, just to go back into the startup menu, um, like I said, it is flexible. You can resize it. Um, and this will take you to your account. So if you click on that, my office, if you have an Office 365 subscription that you pay monthly or yearly, it's really, really helpful to say the least and has a great memory. Um, and if there's things that you need to, you know, update, maybe your payment method was declined or maybe you have to update your payment method, whatever the case might be, they have tutorials and things online and a great amount of apps are literally available at your fingertips. So definitely helpful. Um, you know, to go through that uh, portion of your startup menu. So that pretty much concludes our startup menu. Now, one of the things I probably should point out is the new and improved um, jump list. So this is accessible anywhere you are. So like, for example, let's say I go into a shortcut like Excel. And all I did was perform a right click of my mouse. These are the most recent files that I've worked on. Okay. Like pivot tables, you can pin them to your jump list and that way they become the top of your list. So I would say things that you use like templates, expense reports, invoices, timesheets, anything, you know, that you feel would be helpful. Um, I think the jump list is great, especially if you work with Acrobat, PDF files too, or anything in general, even Google Chrome, even Microsoft Edge. So depending on how often you surf the net, you might find a lot of things here. Um, you know, who feels like bookmarking every website? Like, come on, how many of you have bookmarks that you've forgotten about that you don't even use? It's crazy, right? So, you know, keep it simple. Um, I think that's the name of the game. And, you know, personalize your Windows 10 experience as often as you can, because it'll help you in the long run. Speaking of which, um, any shortcuts that you would like to integrate to, let's say, your, um, your taskbar. Let's say I do use Access often, and I'll be honest, I don't. I used to, but because of Excel's robust uh, tools and features and utilities, I don't have to use Access like I used to. It's not to say Access isn't 
going to be around. It's just not a tool that I personally have to use as often as Excel. So again, I can go to more and again, I can pin it to my taskbar. Now I'll be honest, I have way too much on here and I probably will just want to remove things that I don't use like access. So again, I'm going to unpin it, right click and it's gone. Uh, and that's how you do it. So again, you just right click, you know, whatever it is you want to add, you know, to your, um, to your taskbar. And it's not pinned to start. That's your start menu. We, we're, we're done with that. So you want to go to more and it's called pin to taskbar. And that's, that's just helpful. You know, I don't find desktop shortcuts as helpful. I'll be honest. The only ones I find helpful and it's because what I have to do every day when I teach classes, right? I need to get to this stuff right away. Okay. I, I don't have the time to search and type and look. So for me, having things on my desktop are, are good, especially when my taskbar is nice and full, you know, you just have to, you know, think smart when it comes to, you know, trying to access your, you know, most common, you know, applications, even like your cell phone. I, and, it, and it disturbs me when I have to borrow someone's phone and I'm like, well, where's this shortcut? Well, how do I get to your browser? And they don't even know. I'm like, all it takes is five, 10 minutes, not even sometimes. Set up your home screen like your desktop in a way that makes sense. So it doesn't take even a minute to launch the app unless there's something going on, you know, or you're running an update on your device. OK, so at any rate, um, I think that really covers um, most of the stuff I needed to get through. Now, as far as customizing your PC is concerned. I would say if you want to change the desktop, enable the screensaver, I would right click anywhere on the desktop. And you'll notice where it says personalize. So you activate that, your window will come up. It's, this is going to look a little different, but notice the categories on the left hand side. Okay. So I really, really like the desktop the way it is, but some people don't. So you might want to use a different picture if you want to upload your own photo or a series of them and run it as a slideshow like you did in previous operating systems. You can do that. So again, under the category list personalization, we have background. That's what I'm on. We have colors. So if you want to not use a picture, but colors instead, that's fine. And then you have the ability to lock your screen. I'll be honest with you, you, you can set, set up the settings here, and here's a preview of it. Um, I used a shortcut for that. I used the shortcut, you know, the Windows key and the letter E. So if you use that, let me just bring up Notepad. So again, it's the Windows key, the one that looks like the logo. Uh, nowadays, you have two of those buttons on standard keyboards. And if you don't, it's usually on the left-hand side near the space bar and the alt and control keys. So again, it's Windows L. Yeah, if I just want to quickly walk away from the computer, lock it, secure it, not have to minimize this program and shut down the other programs. So again, I would just use that shortcut. Okay. So getting back to our categories, then we have themes. Themes are kind of cool. If you want to do multiple things, in one step where you have the background, the colors, even sounds, and the mouse cursor. And then once you modify all aspects, or three out of four, or two out of four, or whatever you do, save that theme, you know, so if you have to go back to that theme, maybe it got changed by another user, who knows, maybe it didn't. It's nice to have that theme available, have it saved. You do have fonts, everybody has fonts, so, you might want to see a list of available fonts that you have, get more from the Microsoft store. Okay. And then you have your start menu options. Show less and more tiles on start. I never have that on. If I have to, I resize the start menu. Show the app list in your start menu. I would imagine nobody wants to turn that off. Uh, show recently used apps, definitely a good idea to turn that on. It's not turned on by default show most used apps. I could care less. Like if anything, I know I use Excel all the time and probably, you know, Google Chrome. Uh, so I don't really care who's like first, second and third place. That that's not relevant to my life. Uh, show suggestions occasionally on start. 
Yeah, suggestions are good in many scenarios. So if you're doing something and you forget, it'll say, hey, click here or speak to your digital assistant. Uh, use your start menu as a full screen. Definitely not going back to Windows 8. And then show recently opened items. Remember the jump list? I would definitely have that on. Okay. Now, choose which folders appear on start. That's going to be up to your own discretion. I mean, honestly, in your start menu, maybe have the pictures off. Maybe, you know, like the live pictures that you have in your pictures folder. You know, you have to kind of think about this for your own personal use and preference. You know, downloads, we do download. So that might be something you should have, you know. And, and again, you know, look through this list to make sure things are off that don't need to be on. And then you have your back button so you can just kind of go back to where you left off at. And here's another shortcut. If I just want to close this window, I use Alt Function 4. So, again, another shortcut you may want to write down, Alt F4. Yes, there's the most obvious X to close button, but sometimes it's not always there or it's not obvious to people. So it's another great way to do it. Okay. Now, Windows E, Windows key and the letter E will take me to Windows Explorer. So if I just want to go to my documents, my downloads, like my left side has the quick access things, my Dropbox, you know, I've integrated that on my own, my OneDrive account, um, my cloud-based stuff that I can take or access anywhere there's internet access. Yes, you got to have internet. And again, I'm just going to shut that down with the old X. And now, a neat little thing about Windows. Now, you should see, or, and you should also have this Windows Explorer button. Okay? Now, let me just double-click the title bar. That's right. I double-clicked it. I, I don't have to use the Maximize and the Restore Windows key button there at the top right. Another thing, too, that's really neat. Let me just resize this window a little bit. Okay? Now, let's say I open up another Windows Explorer. And I, I don't know why they allow you to do this, but I guess there's a reason behind it. I'm sure there is. I know there is. But watch this. I'm going to take this window, move it over here. Look what happens to the right. Pretty cool, right? Now, I'm going to activate this window by clicking it. I got tiled windows almost instantaneously. So again, really, really, really helpful. So I guess if you're dragging and dropping, copying and pasting or cut and pasting, you know, this might be helpful to have the windows fully open so you don't put them on the desktop. If they're not maximized and tiled, I, believe me, I've done it. <laughs> um, so let me just kind of put these windows back to the way I somewhat had them. Now, take a look at this. I'm going to take this window. Now, mind you, I might have Excel opened up, and I'm going to try to shrink that too. Now, let's say I take this window, right, and I give it a little shake. The two windows that were there, the Excel and the other uh, Windows Explorer window, are gone. So, again, not that I have anything to hide, <laughs> right? Who's hiding stuff, right? Now, again, I don't want to maximize them. But, again, I just want to kind of clean it up a bit. It doesn't matter which window you choose. You just grab the title bar, give it a shake, and just like that, you kind of minimized everything. But here's another good shortcut that you may want to write down, Okay. So the shortcut does the same thing, but it's not as fun. Uh, it's called the Windows key, letter D is in dog. That will ultimately minimize everything. So again, if you're just trying to quickly get out of stuff, you got a lot of things opened up and it's getting a little crazy, I would say, you know, learn as many shortcuts as you can. What a difference a shortcut can make, right? Absolutely a big difference. And it's such a bonus for me. Now, I'm going to close out of these two windows, but you notice how I was showing you the two windows? Most people go to the X to close, and that's fine, but if you got 15 of them, I wouldn't waste your time. I would right-click. Look, it's right there. That's it, just like that. Close all windows. So, again, what a great time saver. Um, so, before we wrap it up here, there's going to be a part two for Windows 10, um, let's say I'm in the web browser, the new browser that is, Microsoft Edge, okay? And 
again, I was just doing some research, you know, and I thought it was really helpful, um, you know, about the fonts. So anyway, let's suppose this website is so informative. I want to share it with other people. So what I'm going to do is show you the new way to annotate in your web browser. And you can't do this in any other browser. So at the top right, I have a couple icons here. All right. Just want to point out their names. Yes, you have the ability to share it. But then more importantly, I have the notes. This changes the game totally. Like who would have thought that you could do this in a web browser? I know, right? So say goodbye to screenshots, right? At least for now. So you get this new toolbar. It's, it's in its own little territory. So you have the ballpoint pen, right? That's your pen. And then look, if you activate it, there's a variety of pen colors. I would say red is probably a good color depending on what you're trying to do. So literally I could just draw attention, you know, and then if I want to highlight, you know, key things, here's my highlighter. They don't give you as many colors, but come on, it's a highlighter. Like how many possible colors would work, right? And then one little minor important thing, you could adjust the thickness. I would say make it as thick as you can and just kind of give it a nice little highlight, you know, pretty cool. So those are the annotation tools. And then you get the more obvious stuff, like, you know, if you kind of messed up, you know, you just went a little crazy, use the eraser, not a big deal, and it's gone, out of sight, out of mind. And then this little icon is your note taker. So I could just, you know, click on the side. Oh, I'm always famous for saying this. You know, just Google it. And I guess, you know, I could be more specific. Or just get on the website. But even still, that's pretty useful. And then you can move, you know, the note. I'm going to try to close that. You can delete them, too, if you're collaborating. And every time I click, I add a note. So, yeah, that's another thing. Got to deselect the tool. You're going to keep repeating the same step. This is so you can make a screenshot, um, you know, if you want to paste it into a Word document or a presentation program. Um, and this is like your touch um, writing tool. Actually, let me just make sure that is turned on. So, again, I got the note tool selected. So it's just basically a great tool. Um, if you have a touch screen, you know, which I don't, you can just write on the screen as you're touching it. And then obviously this is your save button and then your share button. And again, really, really awesome uh, in my opinion. So if I go to share, a window pane opens up and our cell phone is famous for this. Like I know a lot of times I'll share stuff, a picture, and I can just, you know, a web page. I can copy the link and put it into an email or, you know, Facebook or Instagram or put it on Twitter. So these are just some of the options. And then if you need more apps, you can get them from the store, just like your iPhone store, your Apple store, your Google play store. So this is for windows. So it's definitely helpful. Um, so you can see, I have a lot of things I haven't installed and I'm just not really doing the Facebook thing like I used to. Um, I keep that separate from my computer device because, you know, it's not really what I want to do here, but you could do whatever you like. Uh, but those are the options, you know, that they give you. So, again, welcome to Windows 10. Uh, this tutorial was simply designed to go through a small portion of some of the new enhancements. Now, in the second portion of Windows 10, I will focus on Cortana, uh, your digital assistant, and help you get the most out of that tool. Um, now, Cortana is tied to your Microsoft ID. So it has the same information about you on all the Windows devices you use. That includes your smartphone. So the more you use it on your devices, the more it learns about you and the more useful it will be. But that means you have to use it. All right. So after I go through Cortana, I would like to go through the Windows apps um, so you can take advantage of those as well. So I hope you enjoyed this Windows 10 experience, and I hope you enjoy utilizing Windows 10.
for many, many months to come until the next operating system comes out. 